I will call this meeting of the Marina Parks and Forestry uh, Commission to order. Um, we will begin uh, first with the uh, Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, the first item will be uh, roll call. Uh, Alderman Decker is here. Yeah. Rebecca Clark, did not see. Um, Jerry Jones. Rebecca's I'm here. here. I'm sorry. I'm oh, here. okay. Yep. My screen isn't up. Hello, Rebecca. <laughs> uh, Jerry Jones, John Kaler, Marge Matter. Yes. Peter, Peter Mayer. Yes. Sarah. Uh, Dennis is here, Dennis, and Joe Curlin, and I'm here. We have a quorum. And Marge. And Marge. Marge Madden. Thank you. Uh, is there any public input for this meeting this evening? If not, we will move Nothing. right. If not, we will. I'm sorry. Was there? No. If not, we. Uh, uh, this is James Allen. I'm I'm here and I'm observing and I might I might comment. I'm sorry. Get his full name. Okay. Could we have your first name? Full name, please. James Owen. Is that Joe? Yep. Okay. Thank you. And did you have a comment for us? Not yet. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Mm -hmm. Well, if there isn't anything now, I will close the uh, public input uh, section of this, uh, of this meeting. Uh, the next item would be the approval of the minutes of the February 25th meeting. That was sent out to all of the committee members earlier. I would make a motion to approve that. We have a motion and we have a second. Any discussion on that motion? If not, all those in favor, Mr. please signify by saying aye. Mr. I, I don't think I can vote on the minutes because I wasn't at that meeting, so. Okay, you're, you're going to abstain then. Um, okay, any opposed? Chair also votes aye, so uh, that motion is carried. Okay, the next agenda item is the review and consideration of proposed JC Park Master Plan. And for that, I'm going to uh, turn this over to Joe Curlin. Thank you, Chair. Um, we started working on this plan in January, uh, but David Beeble and myself have been discussing the need for this plan for several years. JC Park has been owned by the city since 1943 and used as a recreational destination since 1963. There has since been few different, a few different plans and many different uses. It seems that the beach may have been used as a swimming area since 1965. Since then, since then it has gone from having lifeguards and concessions to being <clears throat> closed and then open with no lifeguards, no amenities. In 2013, the city worked with a private organization to open a pay-for-play area with the beach and swimming. The attraction, the big attraction at that time, and still is, is the use of wibbits, which are inflatable um, elements in the water. And had been growing for several, uh, the use of these wibbits have been growing for several years in different campgrounds and other communities. After seeing the success that this new partnership had, it was really the basis for realizing the new park, uh, that a new park plan was needed for JC Park. The plan would guide us for the future development of the park. Over the course of this year, the city hired Grafe USA Consulting, an outside consultant to facilitate this plan. I would like to introduce Joe Porter, Ed Freer, and Alex Thiel. They are representatives of Grafe and they will be walking through the plan this evening. What I am looking for at the end of this evening is a recommendation of approval to be sent to the next public works committee. 
Thank you. Joe? Thanks. Thanks, Joe. Can you hear me okay? We can. Okay, great. Um, thank you all for uh, your attendance and interest in this important master plan initiative. I, I apologize that uh, you cannot see my face right now. Uh, I'm having some camera issues, but uh, more importantly, I, I believe you can all see uh, the presentation. Um, so that's better than nothing. <laughs> I hope you're all uh, uh, doing well and, and staying healthy uh, during these challenging times. Um, and uh, is also the reason for doing this virtually. Um, so bear with us, please, as we uh, navigate um, the, the new technology that's required for this type of virtual presentation. Um, as Joe Carillon mentioned, we were hired by uh, the City of Sheboygan Department of Public Works uh, at the beginning of 2020 and have been working on this project basically in, um, uh, in full speed basically since, since March. And uh, what we will be presenting tonight is the result of all the work that's been done since March uh, with a lot of involvement from uh, the Department of Public Works as well as um, the a city appointed steering committee and a stakeholder group that represented um, uh, myriad users of the park. And uh, we, we also had a uh, public engagement uh, process uh, through a uh, public information <coughs> meeting um, in October. Uh, so I, I think what we would like to do is uh, kind of go through the process and run through the report briefly and then focus in on basically the final design that was a result of all, all the public input that we received uh, since March, along with kind of a comprehensive analysis of, of the site, uh, of the site's existing conditions. So um, with that, I'll, uh, I'll jump right in. And, and um, I'm not sure, uh, Alex Phil, who uh, has, is with Grafe, has uh, um, been assisting with this process uh, throughout, uh, as well as Ed Freer. And uh, I think uh, toward the end, you know, if there are question, questions and comments, I, I'd appreciate those. Um, uh, waiting until the end of, of this presentation just to make it a more uh, seamless process. So as you can see here, this uh, you know this is the this is the covered page of the report and kind of an iconic image associated with uh, the park, JC Park. Um, it's you know a, a former uh, quarry, and uh, as a result of quarry operations, uh, sorry. Here we go. As a result of uh, quarry operations, um, you know, you have uh, really interesting and unique um, natural geography with uh, the quarry lake and the surrounding bluffs. But um, the report kind of goes through, the, the park itself has undergone a, a, a series of plans and, and initiatives since uh, the 1960s, um, some um, more practical and some quite ambitious uh, on the ambitious end, you know, including um, uh, in, the, in the 1980s, a proposed wave pool with 300 foot slides and amphitheater seating and, um, uh, uh, so there's been a lot of thought in terms of, of how this park uh, could or should be used by the community. And, uh, you know, when we were hired, we, we were tasked to kind of re-envision uh, the park uh, for not only the current needs and desires of, of the community, but um, also uh, future needs and desires not just the community, but um, 
you know, in an effort to try to make this park a, a more regional destination. So, uh, you know, we cover the history at the beginning of the report, and then we go through the methodology, which basically included a really extensive uh, site inventory and analysis um, and a study on kind of the, the regional context of the park. So this slide or, or rather page in the report here um, illustrates, you know, the JC Park's relationship with um, other nearby destinations um, and, uh, you know, the, the circles represent, um, you know, uh, different uh, biking and walking distances from Quarry Park all the way to it's just about a 20 minute bike ride uh, to uh, Valrath Park on, on Lake Michigan coast. So it's near um, a lot of other important destinations. It's um, the, the northern part of the park uh, is formed by the Pigeon River, which is a tributary of Lake Michigan. And uh, during higher water uh, it is an important spawning ground for uh, steelhead trout. And um, the uh, Calumet Drive serves as kind of the northwestern gateway into the city. So, um, you know, on either side, you have Evergreen Park to the south of Calumet Drive. And on the north, you have uh, a JC Park, which basically frame this, this gateway experience as, as people enter from the northwest. Uh, the the only problem is that you can't really see the park from from the road, and uh, so you know that that lack of identity um, really was important to address as part of this process. This is another view that shows kind of the Pigeon River, uh, you know, forming the the northern edge of the park and uh, running all the way uh, uh, to, to Lake Michigan there. Evergreen Park and um, it is on the other side of Kilometer Drive. And uh, Maywood is just upstream as well. This is just an aerial photo showing the existing conditions. Uh, the yellow lines represent the existing trails. You see the Pigeon River, uh, there's a sliver, um, basically a triangular sliver of um, land that uh, the city owns that is uh, technically part of the park, but very difficult to access uh, because it's um, the, the uh, road grades along Calumet Drive there are extremely steep and then there's no bridge to access across the river there. There is, however, um, an underground, or sorry, an underpass, a pedestrian underpass below Calumet Drive that connects Evergreen Park uh, to JC Park, which uh, serves as an important uh, safe passage for uh, bicyclists and pedestrians alike. There's a 20 hole golf, uh, Frisbee golf course on site, which you can kind of see here. Um, these are the, uh, the actual, uh, holes and, um, sorry, the tees and the baskets. And although traditionally there are 18 holes, there's enough space in uh, JC Park to accommodate for 20, 20 holes. So when we first started working on this project, Grace met with uh, the steering committee to walk the site and take a photographic in inventory and uh, what we did is com combining the, the photographic inventory along with um, a bunch of digitally mapped uh, data, um, we um, pulled together a, a comprehensive analysis that identified opportunities and uh, constraints or challenges associated with um, the site and how it might be reimagined in the future. And as opposed to getting into the, so this is an exhibit that um, we generated, which is basically the analysis. And uh, we go into, we elaborate on those opportunities and challenges <clears throat> um, a little bit in more detail uh, here in the uh, following pages of the report. So, you know, and I, I don't want to, you know, belabor, you know, the analysis, but it was an important part of the process and it informed a lot of the decisions moving forward as far as design recommendations were concerned. And it helped educate um, people, even people familiar with the, 
with the site. Um, uh, it helped educate, you know, everyone involved with this project uh, about, you know, some of the nuances associated with the site. You know, the topography, their steep topography, low-lying uh, wetlands, uh, forested areas, the bluffs, etc. I'm going to hop back here, but as you can, um, as most of you probably already know, the you know, 75% of uh, Quarry Lake is surrounded by bluffs, and that's you know a result of the the former uh, quarry operations, limestone quarry operations, um, and uh, so that that creates this beautiful scene, but it also uh, presents um, you know a challenge in terms of physical access uh, into the lake especially when considering ADA accessibility. There's also liability issues, safety concerns associated with, um, you know, people, you know, uh, cliff jumping and, and uh, things of that nature. So, uh, you know, a huge opportunity is to build upon that connectivity, that underpass between uh, Evergreen Park and, uh, and JC Park below Calumet Drive. You know the the park entry experience. There's there's an opportunity there to improve that uh, uh, via you know selective uh, tree removal. You know obviously we want to respect you know the the healthy trees that are on site. But if we can um, you know selectively cut and uh, enhance views into the park and frame views of of park shelters and and the lake, I think that would really enhance. The entry experience uh, into the park. Uh, trail enhancements. A lot of the trails on site are single track mud, uh, not very well maintained. You can see, um, you know, this middle shot is this incredible perch views, uh, panoramic views of the lake from the bluffs and the surrounding trails. Uh, there's passive recreation opportunities with the forest kind of on the northeast side of the park. <clears throat> the lake itself is, is actually spring fed, so it's consistently fair to good water quality, which is um, uh, makes it uh, that much more of a, an important amenity for the community. The 20 hole Frisbee golf course is a very popular uh, activity, and uh, it's, uh, I think, one of uh, two nearby, including Ballrath, that uh, people within Sheboygan and, and the surrounding community use. Challenges as far as beach access right now, it's uh, pay to use beach access, um, but from an ADA accessibility standpoint, you know, try, trying to consider how to make it more universally accessible. <clears throat> the, uh, the Quarry View Center, it's, you know, it, it, it's, it's a dated structure. Um, but more importantly, it, it blocks it blocks views of um, one of the you know most important assets of of the park, which is the beach. And uh, so, considering how you know that plays into the future of the park in terms of uh, entry experience and, and visual access into the park is important. Uh, there's a chain link fence that surrounds um, a significant portion of of that beach and uh, uh, adjacent shoreline, which, um, you know, serves as a deterrent from physical access into the lake. There's outdated playground equipment. Um, there's dead-end parking um, off to the east near the Frisbee golf course um, that is somewhat uh, underutilized. There's steep slopes along the east side of the, of the park that you know, again, you know, make for ch uh, interesting terrain, but it's, it's a challenge in terms of uh, physical access to certain parts of the of the park. There's significant erosion along the Pigeon River um, that's starting to threaten the uh, the usability of some of the trails that uh, run along the the river there. The eastern entrance off Mill Road is is nice, but it's there's no there's no really good signage there, so it's it's hard as you're driving by unless you 
you know, are familiar with the park, you know, if you're just a visitor driving by, you would never know that that's uh, kind of the eastern gateway into JC Park. So, you know, I kind of just breezed through that. Um, and, and, and of course, you will all have access to the report, um, you know, ap after this meeting uh, to, to read um, a little bit more uh, about kind of those opportunities and challenges that were identified during the analysis phase of the project. But another important uh, phase of this design process was community engagement. So along with the analysis, you know, community engagement really helped inform decisions moving forward with the design. So uh, the community engagement was um, kind of uh, uh, three, there were three tiers of engagement. There was uh, engagement with the steering committee. There was engagement with a stakeholder group that represented, um, you know, primary users of the park. And then there was a public information meeting. In all three of those meetings, uh, we presented some very preliminary uh, concept diagram alternative three um, alternatives that focused on uh, some preliminary program elements that might be included in the future of the park and the relationship of those program elements uh, geographically with one another to try to facilitate dialogue and get input from the three groups, you know, to try to identify likes and dislikes. So um, as you can see here, the, uh, these are photos of a couple of those workshops where we presented the <clears throat> we presented the uh, three alternatives and allowed people to not only provide um, uh, uh, input and narrative afterward, but um, to also mark with uh, green or red dots what they liked versus disliked, respectively, uh, in each one of the, the design alternatives. To supplement the design alternatives, we had some design precedent uh, imagery um, that illustrated how some of those program elements could be exemplified on site. So, you know, these design alternatives for very high level diagrammatic, you know, we didn't want to get too presumptuous about what should happen uh, in the park, but uh, just diagrammatically showing some of the program elements that seemed to make sense based upon the analysis we did and then supplemented with the design imagery, we were able to facilitate pretty constructive dialogue with <clears throat> those, uh, um, those groups that participated in the input sessions. And so this, this page of the report here just shows kind of a snapshot of those results, <clears throat> which were then uh, summarized, but um, you, you can see here each, uh, each one of those design alternatives, their diagrammatic design alternatives were presented and then uh, the bulleted uh, program elements below. So you see here, JC Park Concept Alternative 1. You know, one option showed a, a new building in place of the Core Review Center. Another showed a, a renovation of JC Core Review Center with a new um, multi-use building kind of on the southeast corner of the lake. Uh, and then um, another option where there was um, a a new building in place of the Corey View Center with, with a smaller shelter kind of at the southeast corner and then another ancillary uh, structure like a, a tiki hut of sorts kind of on the north side of the existing beach area. So those were the three alternatives that were discussed during those input sessions. And then uh, the precedent imagery to supplement those diagrams are also included in the report. And, uh, so as you can see, the, the red is obviously a, a dislike and the green is a like, but um, you know we quantified uh, the likes versus the dislikes of, of the precedent imagery that was associated with the program elements proposed in each one of those design alternatives. So um, you know a, a lot of the likes were associated with a new park building as well as uh, new concessions, possibly a beer garden. There was seem to be um, a, a lot of gravitation, uh, gravitational interest toward um, some idea of, of a beer garden or, or a concessions area that could be shared uh, between not only the, the pay uh, per use beach goers, but the general uh, park uh, users as well. 
there was a you know a lot of interest in the frisbee golf activity, and uh, but not so much interest, interestingly enough, in any sort of playground. Um, there's a lot of interest in enhancing the trail system, both for pedestrians and cyclists. There's a lot of interest in more passive recreation for bird watching and nature enthusiasts. And uh, again, kind of in the lower left here, you know, um, a lot of interest in, you know, some sort of outdoor gathering uh, and, and staging area. And uh, to help summarize what we heard in the report, we kind of included a, a lot of the, the reoccurring statements, the most popular statements, and in included some of that in the report to give people an understanding of, of uh, you know, what was, you know, the most popular thoughts moving forward with uh, an informed design. You know, so you see the trail improvements and hierarchy needed. You know, the idea of a multi-use building was something that a lot of people liked. Beer garden, sustainable design elements integrated throughout the park. So with that, you know, all that public input and, uh, you know, this comprehensive analysis really informed the, the, the final design, which is really an amalgamation of, you know, all of, um, uh, you know, you know the the best ideas from each of the three alternatives. It wasn't just taking one of those preliminary alternatives and moving forward with uh, the refinement of that, but it was really kind of picking and choosing elements of each of the three um, into a into a fourth kind of preferred what we are calling a consensus plan because what it represents is basically the uh you know the, the needs and desires of, of not only the city of Sheboygan's department of public works but the community as a whole and that was um a, a reflection of that um the 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 engagement process so there's uh, numerical keys of significant uh proposed improvements for the park um and we kind of dive into each one of those elements um, in the uh, subsequent subsequent pages of the report, but um, to summarize, you know, providing some framed views into you know the the number one asset of the park, which is Quarry Lake, right? So to really improve kind of the identity of the park along Calumet Drive and to enhance visitors' entry experience. Um, so that they have, you know, there's this aha kind of uh, point of discovery moment as you enter um, the driveway and it tees into um, a couple of different parking lots. There's a, uh, a new uh, beach house proposed in place of the existing Quarry View Center. There's also a new multi-use uh, building kind of at the southwest corner of the lake. The existing beach is preserved. But uh, for those park users who, who don't want to necessarily pay for um, that beach access, a, a perched beach that doesn't have physical access to the lake, but uh, provides an opportunity for people to have those similar beach experiences without paying uh, to access um, uh, the pay-per-use beach is, is, an, um, is available is, is another experience. Um, we're preserving the Frisbee golf course uh, there is a 10-foot wide paved multi-use uh, path that um, creates a loop, a loop experience around Quarry Lake. And not only does that uh, create a, a, a new experience for uh, uh, park users, but it also provides um, better service access for maintenance vehicles to maintain uh, the park in a more efficient manner. Um, on the north corner of the lake, there's a smaller open air shelter that's perched up on top of the um, on top of the bluffs there, and in between um, a tiki bar on the north side of the beach, and uh, this shelter is an uh, kind of open flexible lawn area for larger events uh, and activities, and um, you know what we really tried to focus on was 
the flexibility of how these proposed improvements are used both for public uh, events and private events. So a lot of these amenities could be rented out to uh, generate revenue to support um, um, kind of ongoing maintenance of the park in the future. There's a um, on kind of the northeastern corner of the lake right off this loop trail. There's a more intimate um, council ring with commanding views uh, of the western horizon kind of looking back toward the beach. And then uh, as moving clockwise, um, you know, the, the, the loop trail um, wraps around kind of the uh, opposite end of the, the parking area that helps uh, support the, the new multi-use building and uh, in, in a way that segregates those uh, somewhat different uses. So people who might be at a purpose building for a private event um, aren't gonna get in the way of, you know, cyclists enjoying, you know, uh, their uh, lake loop experience and vice versa. There's also, um, you know, we were careful to propose uh, some vegetative uh, buffering between the Frisbee golf course and the multi-use building, as well as the, um, uh, the loop trail. And uh, kind of the, the northeastern half of the park remains quite passive. We are proposing some trail improvements within that area, uh, as well as a, a section of shoreline stabilization along the Pigeon River where there's a significant erosion evident. And we thought it would be an opportunity um, to provide some, some enhanced access to the water where that stabilization would occur. So that's kind of a brief summary of the consensus plan. And then we kind of dive in a little bit deeper um, into each one of those proposed improvements. So the, the report is organized so that each one of those keys, uh, keyed elements in the plan uh, is elaborated on with its own kind of narrative, kind of describing um, kind of in a little more detail uh, what that program element uh, represents and, and what it offers to the, to the general public, uh, along with kind of a class B, you know, order of magnitude cost. So um, as you can see in the lower left corner, this is kind of a plan enlargement of that multi-use uh, building you know, we think with any new building um, in this day and age, there's an opportunity to integrate green infrastructure, whether that's through, um, you know, recycled materials, uh, you know, gray water used for toilets, stormwater, bioinfiltration, uh, you know, green roofs. Um, there's opportunity in, uh, to do things that not only are sensitive to our environment, but actually in, uh, kind of expand the life cycle cost of, of the structures. So it's it's wise investment uh, on many different levels. So uh, kind of the north, uh, or sorry, the uh, the top right corner, you can kind of see a, a character sketch of what that structure might look like with uh, kind of commanding views on top of the bluff, looking toward the toward the existing beach, with uh, con with concessions kind of on the southwest corner that bleed out into uh, flexible open space. Oops, bear with me here. And here's another uh, kind of aerial shot um, to help everyone imagine what that could potentially look like. Again, this is a master plan. So we're talking about big ideas here you know, we're, we're not getting into the, uh, the weeds of, of the details yet. You know, that would happen uh, once the master plan is approved and funding becomes available for uh, one or more of these proposed improvements. So try to keep that in mind when you're looking at these images that, um, you, know, the, you know, the architecture, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's right size for 150% capacity. You know, it, it addresses the desire for concessions and for uh, private events, but it really, you know, needs to be, um, there needs to be another layer of detail uh, before any of this stuff gets implemented or constructed. But you, what it does, what this illustration does show is its relationship to the lake and views across the lake to the beach 
and to the Tiki Hut, and you can kind of see uh, Calumet Drive in the distance kind of go coming down the hill from the western horizon there, just to orient you. Now, let's see here. Stalled out. Here we go. And uh, so the, the new beach house to replace the Quarry View Center, you can see a plan enlargement of that uh, in the top right of the page. Um, it's generally in the same location. You can see the, the, um, the 10 foot wide multi-use trail kind of wrapping around. The one important thing to keep in mind from a liability standpoint is that there will, there is and will continue to get pay line uh, for people that want to use that beach and access the water. Um, so there will be uh, some uh, type of um, uh, fence or barrier so that people that are using the park, daily users of the park that don't want to use the beach uh, can do so without co-mingling with people who are paying to use the beach. And in the, the lower left corner, you can see um, kind of a, 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 a reimagined uh, park shelter again you know focusing on transparency so you see a lot of glass here because we don't want to obstruct views of, of that beach amenity <clears throat> um, and then there would be uh, expanded uh, infrastructure so um, large you know there would be a, a bath uh, there would be uh, showers of bathhouse um, there would be concessions in this building as well um, and uh, and and some storage uh, for not only uh, uh, the tenant of the beach house, but uh, the Department of Public Works as well. And you can kind of see in the background the, the the Tiki Hut across the lake, kind of on the north side of the beach there. One big idea uh, that I think everyone seemed to like was expanding the waterfront um, kind of along the southern shore of the lake. Um, and I'm going to flip back to the plan here. But what we did is we shifted the parking lot further away from the lake to create more usable space closer to the lake for park users and, and activities that uh, those users might be interested in. And we talked about this perch beach area. So again, uh, kind of close to that new beach house, you know, is a, a publicly accessible perch beach does not provide physical access. You know, it's, it's on that bluff there. It doesn't provide physical access to the water, but it allows people to enjoy the beach experience without paying to use um, uh, the beach that's associated with the water park. This is uh, another illustration, kind of, uh, if, if you were kind of, <laughs> floating above Calumet Drive, kind of looking uh, to the to the southeast over the new beach house, the little overlook, you can see the beach wrapping around the southwestern corner of the lake, and then uh, the the tiki the tiki hut kind of book ending that experience. And uh, the tiki hut, I should say, would um, it is is meant to be uh, flexible enough to accommodate both private and public uses, so it could also be rented out for, for private events. It's also a staging area for a potential uh, ropes course that people uh, express interest in. <clears throat> we talked about the multi-use Lake Loop Trail. So that's, that's something that um, really builds upon the, you know, the, the asset of the lake and, and celebrates it as, as a unique feature, uh, unique to, um, you know, it, the, the lake makes th this little inland lake that's a result of former quarry operations really, and the, the surrounding bluffs really makes uh, JC Park, um, you know, just as, as it currently is one of the most unique parks in the region. So, you know, really trying to build upon that asset and, and celebrate it and and get the most out of that is, um, you know, one of one of the, our objectives of 
of this project and and the the paved multi-use lake loop trail does that it creates uh kind of a destination experience for um people who might be using the bike trails in evergreen park that want to kind of finish with the loop around the lake or it might attract um people from uh well outside of, of sheboygan uh to do a, a a loop lake um kind of experience you know it's it's short enough uh it's long enough to be interesting, but short enough to uh, take the entire family. So we think it's it would be a great addition uh, to the park. And this is a view kind of looking uh, to the north side of the beach, uh, kind of with um, the tiki bar framing the left side of the composition and then looking back toward the new beach house. You can kind of see how those elements relate to one another and then on the right side would be the uh, the multi-use path kind of wrapping around we talked about a ropes course there's a lot of interest in that um, you know, we were thinking that it uh, could be located um, in that open space, kind of on the west side, the northwest side of of the lake, um, adjacent to the the Tiki Hut. The Tiki Hut could serve for for rentals for the ropes course, along with rentals for uh, small crafts associated with the beach. Entry signage. Um, both on the northeast side of the park and the main entry off uh, Calumet Drive, we think uh, could and should be improved upon uh, to really enhance that uh, entry experience and people's first impression of the park as they're entering. And uh, from a wayfinding standpoint, just uh, to help people navigate and understand where they are. small open air uh, structure on the northwest, uh, sorry, the northeast corner of the lake is uh, a simpler structure, but it provides another destination that could uh, be used for the general public as well as rented out uh, for uh, both small and large events. Um, it you know, takes advantage of the views uh, looking south, um, and uh, we think that there would be an opportunity maybe to have uh, some sort of uh, fireplace or fire pit um, that could be used and um, extend use of this amenity kind of through the, the shoulder season, spring and fall where uh, temperatures get a little bit cooler. This is a view of that council ring uh, it's a more intimate experience, a little bit off the beaten track. There's a small, uh, a, a narrower four foot wide trail that kind of hugs um, the the top of the, the eastern shoreline there, um, but it's off of that 10 foot wide um, trail. So it, it offers a much more intimate experience. And as you can see there, there's, uh, there's currently quite a bit of vegetation kind of along that shoreline. So um, that, you know, we, we in, we would intend for that to be preserved and and really contribute to the intimacy of that experience. But you can see um, that from here you can you can have panoramic views looking back across the lake toward the the new beach house and the Tiki Hut. And then this last image kind of just provides a, a more comprehensive aerial view of the proposed improvements. So, um, you know, you, you can't really see the Pigeon River on the left, but you can you can see that kind of vegetative riparian corridor that wraps around there. Um, you see the, the, new, the new beach house kind of in the lower left corner. On the right side, you see the new multi-purpose building, um, you know, the Perch Beach kind of on the south side of the lake, and the Tiki Hut on the north side of the beach, and then that uh, that multi-use path kind of wrapping around and looping around the the lake to kind of enclose the more active 
recreational zone of, of the park. <clears throat> and then Calumet Drive is, is right along here forming kind of that, uh, um, that bottom portion of, of the view. So everything that is proposed in this master plan is, you know, I just want to reiterate, it's a, it's a result of not only our own internal analysis of the site, which is something that we do for every project we're involved with, but um, more importantly, it's, it's a reflection of what we heard from the community. So not only the, the Department of Public Works, but um, the community as a whole. I, you know, the stakeholder group workshop was imperative to understanding the, the needs and the desires of park users. And um, hopefully this master plan, you know, garners some enthusiasm moving forward with these proposed improvements when, when funding becomes available. And so, you know, the next steps in closing would be, you know, implementation. And, you know, we, I, I'll, I'll go back to this more interesting slide, but, you know, we, there's, um, uh, the Department of Public Works uh, has their uh, comprehensive outdoor recreational uh, plan um, that is up for renewal here shortly. And, and uh, once this master plan is, is approved, it will be adopted into the, into the corp and uh, then be uh, eligible for uh, federal, state, and local funding. So, um, you know, we're, we're hoping that this report can be used not only to generate enthusiasm, but, uh, but also to, to be used uh, um, to, to help uh, encourage uh, funding and partnerships in the future that really um, make some of the uh, proposed improvements a reality. So with that, Joe, I don't, um, I don't know if you have anything else to add, or Alex, I don't know if you have anything else to add. I kind of breezed through uh, the report knowing that, that it, it will be available to everyone after this meeting. Uh, I just, I didn't want to get bogged down in too many of the details. You know, there was uh, over six months of work uh, that was put into this document, and I, I certainly didn't want to belabor the process too much, but uh, if I missed anything, um, please uh, feel free to uh, to jump in and, and, and say so. Uh, thank you, Joel. Um, just, I guess for your infor information, uh, the committee was provided a copy of this report um, I think many of us tuned in to the October 1st presentation where the three different concepts were, uh, were shown, which was a, mm -hmm. was a public hearing at that time. And uh, I guess as committee chair, just, just want to congratulate you. To see this boiled down into this, uh, this forum is, is, is very good. They, the three different concepts were, were almost overwhelming. So. I think as far as a presentation to this committee um, in the format that you've put together, I, I really congratulate you. It's, it's, it's very good. But it, the committee uh, has seen this report. Um, so with that, I guess if uh, anyone in the, on the committee has any questions for uh, Joel Porter or, or Joel Curlin, uh, now would be the time to ask those questions, questions or comments. Peter. Uh, Joe, uh, I also um, appreciate all the detail that you put together. Um, clearly, it was a very thorough process uh, with stakeholder involvement and community input. I did have a question about the number of buildings. Uh, right now, this park has one building, uh, one physical building, and uh, your plan or proposal has uh, effectively for the multi-use park, the beach house, the tiki uh, area, and uh, an additional shelter. Um, is your sense uh, that all of those should be constructed at the same time, or is this something that would be done on an incremental basis as 
uh, usage of buildings would increase or or what was your idea of going from one single building uh, to to four uh, in terms of land use? Yeah, thanks for that question. Uh, absolutely the latter. It would be, uh, you know, with any, with any kind of large scale master plan like this, phased implementation is critical to, um, uh, it, otherwise it's just way too overwhelming, you know? So, you know, I, I, I suspect that, you know, once, once this master plan is adopted, um, you know, the Department of Public Works is um, going to start looking into funding and partnership opportunities and to see, you know, if, if there's some um, some initial interest in any of the proposed in improvements uh, in conjunction with what they consider a priority just from a, a functional aspect, you know. So, you know, I, I could see uh, you know, this multi-use building potentially, you know, being constructed while the existing quarry view center is used over the next several years and, uh, you know, maybe, you know, replacing quarry view center. I'm just thinking, you know, hypothetically speaking here, um, as, as how this could happen, but, um, you know, you know the multi-use building, you know, potentially being constructed, and Quarry View Center, uh, the existing Quarry View Center, being used uh, for the next several years until, you know, that resource has been completely exhausted. Right now, it's 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 quite dated, but it still functions the way it it needs to. Um, you know, the Tiki the, the Tiki Bar building and, and uh, outbuilding that ancillary building. Um, you know, I could see that being um you know a you know a third or fourth priority not not one of the first priorities i could see the path you know this loop trail being a single project that's implemented on its own as funding becomes available so i i think you know phasing these improvements is, is critical to the success of, of the project and uh, i don't think it would be realistic to assume that um the, the entire plan could be constructed all at once. So I, I, I hope that that answers your question. And, and you know, this, this document should also be considered as, as, as a working document. So, you know, the, we understand that the, the, the only constant is, is change these days. And, you know, this, the, the needs and desires of, of the general public and, and the surrounding community, you know, they're going to evolve over time. And so, you know, which is why the master plan can't get so detailed. It needs to be flexible enough to accommodate for changes in the needs and desires um, uh, throughout the years. So, uh, you know, there could be some slight modifications to, to what's currently being proposed when funding becomes available, which is another reason why when funding does become available, that, that more detailed design uh, occurs to, um, that, and, and that, that detailed design should include uh, kind of a reevaluation of the needs and desires and the program elements associated with any proposed improvement. Joe, thank you very much for that answer. It was very detailed and, and it was very helpful. Um, a quick follow-up question to that. Um, since your firm did such a great job on going through the process, obtaining stakeholder input and community input, um, do you think that you have the information that could be uh, used for purposes of determining uh, best phasing right now, or is that something that would need to be done at a later stage by somebody else? Well, I think that it really, <laughs> yeah. so oftentimes with the master plan, we'll pull together an actual phasing diagram, but when we spoke about that internally, we thought that that might be a little bit too presumptuous because we then would be assigning a, a, a priority to something that might not necessarily attract funding. 
So, you know, if, if you, for instance, uh, you know, if there's, if, if there's, um, you know, uh, a, an entity, um, an individual or, or a business who's, uh, you know, particularly excited about the, a, a new building and, and provide, uh, uh, you know, a significant donation to make that happen, then, you know, you're not, I, I would imagine, uh, you know, uh, Sheboygan's not going to say no, no to that. And so, you know, although programmatically, you know, that might not be a priority, if funding is available, I would imagine that that would become, you know, priority number one. So I think it really comes down to, uh, you know, future funding and partnership opportunities. And, and I understand, Joe, that was probably not a fair question to ask you, but I'm just trying to get a, an idea of if phasing is necessary, how, we'd go, how we would go about doing that. Uh, again, I think it is, uh, you're probably right, it is a little presumptuous even for our committee to be looking at phasing instead of the master plan. Um, I'm always thinking the next steps, though. Thank, thank you, Joe. Sure, thanks. Any other questions? Dean? Yes, Joe, I just had one quick question. I didn't see anything. Um, I know you, you, you brought it up a little bit about barriers and things like that. What kind of thoughts did you have on something that's a little more aesthetically pleasing than a chain link fence to around the, the, but what would, did you have any thoughts or any ideas as, as to what you, uh, would, what could be something that would make the area safe, but still be a little more aesthetic? Yeah, so uh, that's a that's a really good question, and uh, I think it's it's a combination of uh, hardscape and, and softscape materials. So ar around the beach, you know, we don't we want to maximize transparency into the site. Um, so you know, the the beach, if people are paying to use the beach, uh, we still want to allow you know people using this this loop trail to look inside and you know. Um, uh, you know, frame views of the lake and the beach, and you know, who knows? Maybe it'll uh, garner interest in them paying to use the beach after they uh, run the loop. Um, so, uh, as far as uh, any sort of uh, physical barrier, hardscape barrier is concerned, you know, we were thinking, and there are a couple, a couple of the renderings do show that. Um, if I can go up a little bit, but uh, let's see here. You can kind of see, you know, in this in this lower left image, you know, there's a knee wall condition uh, with a transparent fence that might be six feet high, for instance, that still allows views into the beach and the lake without, um, while still uh, providing some uh, um, uh, physical deterrent. Now, along other portions, you know, there that that uh, that barrier may exist as uh, this enhanced uh, natural shoreline where we're really, you know, I should have, I should have mentioned this. I, I, I failed to mention the fact, and I'll go back to the, uh, to the master plan here, but where we're expanding the waterfront experience along the, the Southern shore, you know, the, in order to maximize versatility in the use of that space um, from a, um, from a visitor standpoint and activities associated with, um, you know, how the visitors want to use that space. I, you, we, we're, we're also recommending that there be a, a kind of an enhanced vegetative buffer between the lawn area and, and the lake. And uh, not only will that help uh, deter people from um, going where they shouldn't, but it'll also help from a, a stormwater management standpoint to intercept and infiltrate any stormwater running off either the, the parking lot or the open lawn um, uh, before it enters before it enters the lake. So we think, uh, as far as physical barriers concerned, it would be a combination of of uh, built systems as well as uh, natural vegetation. Uh, Mr. Chairman, this is Ed Freer. Could I also add a few sentences? Where? That is right. He's with the consultant. Oh, yeah, by all means. Yes. Yeah, so I'm, I'm part of the consultant team. And okay. I just, I, I do want to leave you with some.
some optimism and positive thought on the phasing and also partially an answer to the buildings. <clears throat> During the interview for this project, we were specifically asked if we had any experience and if we would be able to identify revenue generating opportunities for the park. As we all know, there's never enough money in our budgets and our capital improvements. So that this uh, master plan and the proposed structures is part of an answer to that, that charge that we were given. And so that any of these structures, whether they be <clears throat> pieces of architecture with controlled environmental, or they become structures that have open air opportunities, pavilions, shelters, whatever we label them as, become wonderful opportunities to make this park useful 12 months out of the year. <clears throat> and to use them, uh, right now your big revenue generation is the operation of the beach. So all of these structures could dramatically enhance that side of the financial. In terms of the phasing and paying for these, as well as any other um, improvements in the in the park, yes, we we can help you in that. And we, I want to say, in my forty some year career, there's never enough money in the cookie jar. And I want to say that most of the success and the implementation of the projects that I've been involved in, with a variety of public, whether it's state or city or county levels. <clears throat> have been a result of public and private partnerships. Uh, you already have the JC name on the park, so the service groups are, are a wonderful source of helping improve these things. You also have a number of state and federal funds that could be applied towards these. So the vegetation and improvements could be demonstration areas using DNR money, coastal management money, Fund for Lake Michigan money. Uh, the trail system could be part of a federal grant Access to the water's edge is, uh, there's a number of federal programs that offer handicapped access for recreation and fishing. So I wanna leave you with a, a positive uh, bit of more than hope. They exist, it's hard work, but we can help uh, Joe and, and his colleagues in the city maybe uh, focus on some of these areas and prioritize. And so in terms of a logical phasing, you know, historically, We'd say, okay, we're going to put this road in. We'll part part B will follow part A, part C will follow part B. So that aspect of phasing is no longer a traditional way of looking at a project. But if a funding source becomes available that addresses one of these wishes, you would certainly not say no to the money if it's available. And if you don't pursue it, another community will. So I think we can have a conversation at the end of this and uh, maybe at least talk through a variety of strategies that might be uh, a path to implementing some of this and might reinforce a stronger thread of how this might be implemented. So that's all I have to offer. Thank you. Do we have any more uh, questions from the committee members? If not, we are looking for a recommendation um, actually a little stronger than a recommendation. We'd be looking for a motion uh, from this committee uh, on what your pleasure is regarding this project and um, developing the master plan. Uh, a recommendation, excuse me, motion would go to the Department of Public Works. So is someone inclined to make a motion? Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I'd like to make a motion to recommend uh, the final consensus plan as presented by the consultant to the Public Works Committee for adoption. Thank you. Do we have a second? We have a second from Jerry. Thank you. Any additional discussion on the motion? If not, I will call the question. All those in favor, please indicate by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. Okay, noted, we have one uh, opposed. The chair also votes aye, the motion does aye. carry. I wasn't opposed, actually. I think it's, my sound it's just came in late. late. 
I'm sorry, what was? She's not opposed. Not a, okay. It was just a delay. <laughs> it was a delay, thank you. <laughs> it's unanimous, okay, motion is carried. Um, that is the only agenda item we, we had today. Um, our next meeting is tentatively scheduled for February 2nd, uh, presumably at the Department of Public Works uh, conference room, probably? It, it, it's possible. Okay. Yes. So uh, watch your email. I thank everyone for attending tonight. And with that, this uh, meeting is adjourned. Mm -hmm.